A Stuart 10H steam engine build, part 18, the painting video. Normally I brush paint model steam engines. Just for a change I painted this one using rattle cans of grey etch primer and Land Rover deep bronze green that I had left over from my 1971 Land Rover that I was working on a while ago. The black satin spray paint for the base was the usual stuff I use, which is HMG Paints Satin Black. On with the show. First of all, it's the etch primer coat. This is the box bed, and I've also painted the inside of it before moving on to the outside. Remember, these cast parts I do not want to look really nice and smooth, because if this was a full-size engine, it would not have the finish of a brand new motor vehicle. Moving on now to the painting of the sole plate. I didn't want to get any paint inside the trunk guide, and for that reason I rolled up a piece of sandpaper, and the sandpaper gets the paint, not the inside of the trunk guide. This is only a very small paint job, but please be aware that you need to do things like this in a very well-ventilated area. Or hold your breath and then run away and get some fresh air. I've been very careful to avoid runs or sags, and really, for etch primer, I am putting on a little bit too much. This stuff I use from a company called Auto Paint Northern is really good. It's the best I've come across. It's very simple to use and sticks very well to any metal that you paint with it. I didn't bother masking off the flywheel. There was no point, really. All I did was use a small amount of cellulose thinners on a piece of kitchen towel and simply wiped off the paint residue. It's not particularly cold in my workshop as it's attached to the house, but I thought it was a good idea to put the parts on top of the radiator, which is quite hot, so the paint gets baked on. I am now going to leave these for 24 hours, and here I'm removing the valve rod and the gland, getting ready to paint the steam chest, but I'm leaving the exhaust pipe in position because I want to paint that. This etch primer, which you can rub down if you wish after you've painted it on, doesn't give the most stunning finish I've ever seen, but even without rubbing down the primer coat, when I apply the top coat, everything seems to go right. I don't know what it is. The primer has a sort of a, I don't know, knobbly finish if you looked at it under a microscope, I suppose. This holds the top coat paint firmly in place. Looking back at the video, in retrospect, I should have made a fitting to hold this part to paint it. But it came out OK in the end, and that's the main thing. I put this on the radiator as well as the other parts, and then, 24 hours later, I returned to the workshop to continue the painting. I painted the steam chest and the box bed first, one green and one black. And so that the paint didn't get marked, I screwed it onto a piece of brass tube in the small machine vise from my Proxon drilling machine. Here I'm spraying the sole plate. I painted the top part first and then held it up and painted underneath. This Land Rover deep bronze green paint is a bit different to a lot of other paints I've used. It covers well, but you do have to be careful to avoid runs. Now it's the time of the flywheel. Why haven't I masked off the flywheel? Because it's a waste of time. And don't worry, I haven't gone mad. It's just that the paint is so easy to wipe off with some cellulose thinners and a cloth, I can save some time by not having to mask the part. In these clips, the flywheel is supported by a piece of quarter-inch diameter silver steel. And once the job is complete, I will wipe the green paint off the silver steel bar as well. For you paint experts out there, this is what I'm using. Land Rover Deep Bronze Green 1K Converted Gloss Aerosol. And I've used many tins of this stuff when I painted my Land Rover. Here it is. All the paint on this, with the exception of the side windows, is from Auto Paint Northern, but unfortunately they cannot post the paint, so you have to go and fetch it, and it's in West Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. More or less it is exactly 50 miles from where I am, and it's well worth the trip. I got exactly the finish that I wanted on the Land Rover. I didn't want it to look like a perfect paint job. I wanted to retain some of its 1971 character with the odd dent here and there. And once again, 24 hours later, I'm back in the workshop. 
and all the parts with the exception of the cylinder that I need to do a little bit of work on because the casting is a bit rough. I was going to put some cladding around it but when I tried it I really didn't like it and I'm not going to put any drain cocks on it too because they are so massively overscale it spoils the appearance. Instead I'm just going to clean up the cylinder and paint it. I'll show you that in the next episode. I've painted the flywheel and there is green paint on the outside edge, around the rim and down the middle. I remove the paint down the middle using the reamer, very gently, just to remove the paint. I wiped around the outside edge with cellulose thinners on a cloth after the etch primer coat. Now I need to do it again. Just for a bit of diversity at this stage I refitted the grub screw that holds the flywheel to the crankshaft. And in these clips you can see how bad the flywheel looks on the outside edges. So once again, using a kitchen towel with a bit of cellulose thinners on it, I clean off the paint round the outside edge. The rim is a little bit more difficult to do. After doing one side, on the other side I used a different technique for removing the paint. Quite simple, a steel rule, the edge thereof. Then I gave it a quick wipe with some cellulose thinners on a new piece of kitchen towel. I also wanted to clean the paint off the ends of the centre boss. And that is it for this episode. In the next one I'll be assembling the engine. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.